Yes, I'm back. Please take your seats quietly. Hey, everybody. Glad to have you guys back. Carl Schuf here from Snorkel.tv. And today what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to take the uh, interactive map that I built previously with no action script. This file really was just set up so that super beginners could do very basic rollover effects and have a little bit of interactivity with no action script. Well, this method works great out of the box for a very specific purpose, but um, it's not very flexible or scalable, and there's really no whiz-bang wowness to it. So what we're going to do is show you how to approach an interactive map from a totally different perspective, and really show you how using just a little bit of action script can make your maps so much better. And the action script here is going to be minimal, um, but by just adding a little bit of code, you'll see now that when I roll over objects, they smoothly fade in and out. Um, the color changes via a tween, and also the descriptive text that shows up animates in, it moves a little bit, and de-blurs. So uh, the method I'm going to show you uh, will really make it easy to have maps with many elements be interactive and have animated descriptions. So what I'm going to do is show you how to build the map like this, and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to compare it to the previous map and just show you how great it is in its flexibility. So we're going to start off in goodmapstart.fla, and we're just going to talk about how the file is set up. Then we're going to add a little bit of action script, show you how it all works, and then show you how this method is superior to the previous. Okay, so on the stage I have map underscore mc, and this is one movie clip that contains individual clips for all the different stores that I'm using in the map. Each one of these stores has an instance name, like pots and pans, chandlers, chandeliers, and camp out. What a great store that is. Um, also back on the timeline, you'll notice that I have this symbol here called just in case cases. Um, I'm sorry, this is the description symbol. And in there, there is a timeline with all the text built in. So the text in this example is not inside of the overstates of all the buttons that I built previously. Um, it's its own symbol, so that means we can move it wherever we want and update it easily. Now this isn't the best method in the world, so I will we'll be doing a follow-up video very shortly showing you how you can pretty much get around having this movie clip here, but for right now it helps very quickly um, illustrate how well the action script can work. So what we're going to do is make sure that every time I roll over one of these individual movie clips, it's going to tween its color, and then also this description text is going to jump to the appropriate frame, and we're going to animate in the name of the store and the phone number. So I have some actions already in this file, and here we're just setting up the basic interactivity, adding the event listeners for the map. Now the method I'm going to use here allows me to put the event listeners directly on the map so that I don't have to add them individually to each and every store that I have in the map. And if this code right here is totally foreign to you, I suggest that you just view one of my previous tutorials where we have assign event listeners to multiple movie clips in a single blow with an exclamation point, a look at target versus current target. And this page here will show you exactly what all that code means. So let me go back to Flash, and in my actions, I want every object when I roll over it to tell me what its instance name is, because there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the instance names on the stage, sorry, in the map, to the names of the frames inside of my description or store info movie clip here. Okay, so you'll see that this instance name is Guns Plus, all one word, Camel Case, Chandler's Chandeliers, all one word, and we're going to use the instance names of the movie clips to tell this movie clip which frame to go to. Alright, so in my actions I'm going to figure out what each individual movie clip's name is that I'm rolling over. So I'm going to set up a variable called map item it's going to be a movie clip, and we're going to look at the event object coming into this listener function. 
So I'm going to say, give me the event objects target. So that's the actual clip that I rolled over inside of the map MC. And we're going to cast this as a movie clip. All right. All right. And after we do that, let's trace out the value of map item. Okay. So let's see what exactly is map item. I'm going to test this movie. And when I roll over this object here, the trace gives me object movie clip. So it knows that I'm rolling over individual movie clips, but that information isn't really descriptive. So let's kick it up a notch. And in my actions, I am going to find out the name of that movie clip. Okay, so we're going to get the name property. And now when I roll over this clip, it says Chandler's Chandeliers. When I roll over this clip here, it's Pots and Pans. Then we have Spatula City and we have Guns Plus. So all these clips, when I roll over them, are now telling me their names. They're all aware of what their names are. So once I know the name of the clip, I'm going to tell my description movie clip simply to go to and stop on a certain frame. And that frame is going to be the individual map item's name. So that's the frame label that I'm looking for. So just by adding this one little line of code now, instead of just doing a trace, I roll over pots and pans, and bingo, there we go, pots and pans. Roll over spatula city, roll over camp out, roll over Chandler's chandeliers. So based on the instance name of the movie clip that I'm rolling over, I'm telling another movie clip to go to a particular frame. Now, this is a little bit of a shortcut, and it isn't the most flexible thing in the world, and again, We'll show you how to make this even better in the future, but we got to go step by step. Well, that's pretty much the main functionality. Right now, everything I'm going to add is just going to be a little bit of flair. So I'm going to use some tween max stuff to add my animation. And instead of typing this all out line by line, I'm just going to paste it in from a, a scratch file that I have. And we'll talk about it briefly, but I know you guys got better things to do than to watch me type. So what was all this? All right, every time I roll over something, we're going to tell the current map item to take half a second to change its tint to this orange color. So we'll go line by line. So what that does now is it makes every movie clip change to orange. And you'll notice that it's a really nice, smooth um, fade that's happening. It's not just boom, in your face, red to orange, it takes its time in tweening in, and it gives us that subtle elegance that we're all looking for. So let's close this out. Now I also want all these clips to revert back to red. So we'll add some actions for that. So we're just going to copy and paste a little stuff. We're reusing that map item code where we're figuring out what the current map item is that we're rolling over. And now we're just going to set its color to a maroon 990000. So every clip is now going to turn orange when I roll over it and back to red when I roll out. And if I roll very quickly, you get this really nice effect, all nice and smooth. So I didn't have to build tweens on the timeline. I didn't have to build individual movie clips of all these shapes fading from one color to the next. If I don't like that orange color, well, no big deal. Instead of editing six or seven different movie clips, all I have to do is change a color. So if I don't like the orange, maybe I want a blue. All right, I'll do something like 0000, zero, zero, zero maybe uh, 99. Okay, so here now everything turns blue. So I've updated the color of all of the little map items by just changing one little number. All right, this is a great example of showing you how just a little action script can go a very long way. Now if I want to make this change of text down here a little bit smoother, um, I already pasted in my all from code, so let's just do this, or I should say my from to tween max. Let's, let me uncomment this out, all right, and let me just squish that in. So here we're doing a tween max from to, I'm telling the description movie clip to take half a second, and with from to, we pass in two vars objects into our tween. 
Um, we're saying where we're going to start at an alpha of 0. An x of 50 is going to move it over a little bit to the right. And we're going to blur it quite a bit. And then we're going to pretty much remove all of those um, properties. We're going to tween the alpha from 0 to 1, the x from 50 to 10, and the blur filter is going to go from 80 to 0. All right, so let's do this. And now, there we go. I did one change. I added one line of code, and now all those descriptions fade in, deblur in, and slide in. And we can just tweak that code all we want to maybe experiment with uh, different effects. We could do scale in, we could do a rotate in, it doesn't matter. Um, but we have all these hooks in place now for a really cool interactive map. Let's go ahead and look back at my badmap.fla. Now, the way this thing was built was with individual simple button symbols, so that when I edit one of these symbols, you'll see I have an upstate and an overstate where I manually change the color to orange, and I've also put the rollover text inside the button. Again, I wouldn't recommend you do this on a large project. This was simply to show ultra beginners some neat little tricks. Um, if I go back to scene one here, and I want to change the rollover color from red to orange, well, I would have to go into every clip, go to the overframe, and make that change. The big problem with this file is this. Here, if somebody says, oh, you know what? This store here should be swapped with this one over here. Well, if I just take this symbol and move it around, we're going to have some really catastrophic problems here. Due to the fact that the descriptive text is inside the button, you'll notice that it's now offset horribly. When I roll over this guy here, Spatula City is over to the right. We don't want our text jumping around. Furthermore, if I take this symbol here and I need to scale it down because the store is actually much smaller, if I test my movie now, the descriptive text shrinks and gets smaller. And it's just not good at all. But if I go into my good map, here we have a lot of flexibility. I can take and go into the map, I can take this symbol right here, and I can not only scale it down, but I can move these things around, and there we go. Test the movie out, and you'll see now that the description text, since it's a separate movie clip outside the buttons, uh, isn't affected at all. If I want my descriptive text maybe to be at the top of the file, not a problem. I'm going to just select it, I'm going to cut it, and I'm going to take everything else on my stage, slide it down, and we'll just do a little paste back into the text, into the store info layer, and I'll move it up. All right, to do this in the non action script version would take forever because each individual button symbol would have to be edited. All right, so hopefully, folks, you see the advantage in taking this script approach. And again, it's nothing terribly new here. Um, again, most, most of it you guys have done before. It's just hopefully beneficial for you to see me using it and to show you how to implement these various effects in tandem. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up and uh, stick around because I am going to show you how we can completely do away with all of the individual frames inside of my description or store info movie clip because right now, we don't want to have to add new frames to this movie clip every time we add a new store. It's not the end of the world, but it's not the most flexible thing. So we're going to get into that, hopefully, um, within a day or two. All right, folks, stick around, and I'll catch you soon.